hopefully you've been able to complete those, which can give us a really good idea of um, what our sleep patterns are like and if we're getting enough sleep. And like um, one of the um, students questioned, you know, we might be getting too much sleep as well. So having to think about that too. So there's some quotes here. Um, I have no trouble going to sleep. In fact, I sleep way too much. I just still feel tired. I wake up two to three hours before I need to get up, just laying there trying to drop off again. And I'm very restless throughout the night, often waking and not able to get to sleep. So what I'd like to ask you now, and I'll have to ask you, Ms. Linders, to kind of report back to me because I can't see you, is if you get nine hours or more sleep per night, put your hand up. And then Ms. Linders, can you tell me how many of the students... Okay. Your me, nine hours plus. me and one, two, three, four. Do you get nine hours of sleep or more a night? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven students and me. Right, we're not counting you, Miss Linda. Okay, eleven students. <laughs> so eleven students. Okay, and is it a class of twenty-five? Did you say? You've got. Okay, so those 11 students are getting around the right amount of sleep for their age group um around nine hours is the amount of sleep on average that you need as a teenager now some people need slightly less it is an average some people need slightly more and the way for us to understand whether we're getting enough sleep or not is we should be able to wake up and feel quite refreshed in the morning um, and ready for the day without the need for an alarm clock so if you're getting maybe eight hours sleep a night and you wake up easily on a morning, you're raring to go, you know, no problems with feeling drowsy through the day, then it may well be that you get enough sleep. If you're sleeping longer than that, maybe 10 hours sleep a night and you think actually, you know, when I wake up before my alarm, I feel quite refreshed, I feel okay. You know, that's probably okay for you as well, but the average is around nine hours. Now, can I ask, is there anybody that's getting less than six hours sleep per night for you to put your hand up? One hand, shut up. Anyone else get less than six hours sleep a night? One, two. <laughs> sometimes. You're two definites and some sometimes. Okay. Okay. So what I'd be thinking about there is if we've even got one person in the class that's getting less than six hours sleep on a regular basis per night, that's massively going to be having an impact on both your physical health and your emotional health and your ability to kind of concentrate through the day, um, not become too distracted, and it may well affect your memory as well, but I'm going to tell you a bit more about that in a moment. So just generally, I'd like to hear from a few of the students, Ms. Linders, about um, how well they see their sleep so kind of they might be getting about the right amount of hours but they're not really fe really feeling refreshed or there might be some specific difficulties maybe waking through the night or struggling to get off to sleep on a night okay so, so Linda, can you report you back on that for me any particular like you struggle to get to sleep so alamot when i sleep for longer i wake up did you hear that and this is actually my stepdaughter martha always says this when i sleep more i'm more tired is that yeah. so when, the more sleep you get so uh, alamot says yeah. sleeps longer she actually wakes up more tired yeah point um, and i just mentioned something about that is that yep. okay Ms. Linders? Yep. so you know i gave you the average amount of sleep that's kind of helpful for your age group if we're sleeping more than that it can make us feel a little bit fatigued and a little bit drowsy through the day so what we need to work out is what our individual our personal it's called a circadian rhythm but it's like our body clock so what works for us you'll be able to work out you know if i have around eight and a half nine hours sleep i wake up feeling all right if I have any more than that, I just feel like not good during the day. So I need to try and stick to regular sleep patterns. So I'm getting that optimum amount of sleep that's good for me because we're all very individual with our body clocks as well. Okay, go on, Lena. Yeah, I have that quite a bit. So um, Lena's just said sometimes you wake up at like two o'clock in the, in the yeah. night and you just cannot get back to sleep again. Yeah, yeah, that's really common. And I'm really interested to hear, actually, if, if things like that have been more common since the pandemic, you know, with all our routines being out over the last year, because a lot of people have reported back to me that they are struggling to stay asleep. So once they've gone to sleep, they'll be waking during the night. And I'm wondering if 
when you kind of wake up at two in the morning or three in the morning, which is really quite common if you're kind of worrying about things, because that tends to be what happens, you know, we'll have things on our mind. And then it gets really, really difficult to get back off to sleep. So I can make some suggestions for that, some strategies that really help, if that would be helpful at this point. Or do you want me to pass those kind of strategies on to you afterwards? Yeah, I've got a few more questions. you want me to yeah. try some strategies? Yeah, a couple more questions. questions. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Alicia, you were going to say something. No, Danielle? No, no. I don't think I'm asleep. Even if I sleep at night, and then I will still wake up at two. Right. Let's say I wake up like three times. I can't go back to the hospital. So like, if I have a bad dream, yeah. I can't go back to the hospital. I can come out. And then it can be hot. Hot, you get really. Did you hear that, Sarah? Yeah. 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 Okay. So. I did I hear right that if you have a bad dream, it's difficult to get back yeah. to sleep and then sometimes feeling really hot during the night? Yeah. 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 So two really good points you've made there. Um, and we are going to talk a little bit more about how we get a good night's sleep a little bit further on in the session. And um, that's that will answer some of those questions as well. But just to point out to you that, um, you know, it's really common to have kind of nightmares and bad dreams, particularly at times of uh, increased stress. So something we've seen during the pandemic is a real increase in nightmares and night terrors, but also with kind of teenagers and that age group, there's quite an increase in nightmares and worries during the night. And I think that's often we can think about how anxieties are raised at certain periods in your life at secondary school. You know, things like exams coming up, maybe worrying about what you're going to do next after you finish at secondary school, uh, worrying about results that might be coming up in terms of testing, uh, keeping up to date with things at school and maybe things to going on in your personal lives as well and in your family lives can all lead us to have some anxieties during the night which often culminate in nightmares um, I think during the pandemic as well we've all had a certain level of anxiety constantly and we push it back you know to the back of our minds don't we whereas that we might have about Covid and things like that but they kind of creep into our minds in our subconscious when we're sleeping resulting in nightmares the point you made about being too hot is a really good one. Actually, the optimum temperature for a good night's sleep is 17 degrees, which is actually quite cool. And for us to be in our deepest sleep, our core body temperature has to be quite low. So if your bedroom's too hot, it's going to really make it difficult for you to sleep. But I'll say a bit more later when I talk about bedroom environment to help you to sleep. Okay. And we just have maybe one more question, Miss yeah, Lewis. Go on, go on, yeah. Go on. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, so I don't know if you, you picked that up, Sarah, but we've got a student here who wakes up boiling hot. I have. I have to say, I have this as well, that I am, um, it's not just hot, it's like really, really hot and you wake yeah. up. Yeah. And the room is, is quite cool. Yeah. But the body temperature feels quite hot. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a lot of people saying they wake up hot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the temperature of your room and the temperature that you feel yourself at is really, really important for a good night's sleep. Um, it's really helpful if you can have a window open. I know that's quite difficult sometimes because it's noisy outside, but having a window open and some fresh air going around the room can really help with sleep or even having a fan on through the night can really help. Also, the white noise from the fan is quite soothing to help people fall asleep as well. So those might be two things to try out. Can I just quickly come back to the nighttime waking as well and what to do, Ms. Linders? Yeah, on that was the first question that we had. Yeah. So what's helpful if you wake during the night, don't stay in bed trying to get back off to sleep for longer than about 20 minutes. Because if you do that, you develop a certain association with struggling to get to sleep when you're in bed. So the better thing to do would be to get out of bed 
and do a, a quiet, calming activity that will make you feel drowsy again and then get back into bed again. And quiet, um, calming activities are anything that you can do where you're focusing with your hands and doing something quite intricate with, uh, sorry, focusing with your eyes, doing something quite intricate with your hands. So things like mindful colouring, sketching, writing a diary, um, doing any kind of jewellery making or doing a, a puzzle or something like that or reading just quietly with some low light on in your bedroom can be really helpful. You'll feel drowsy again and then as soon as you feel drowsy again, get back into bed. Another thing to try out is to have a notepad by the side of your bed because what we often do, and Miss Leanders, this might be a good one for you to try out as well, is um, if we wake up at two o'clock in the morning we'll start thinking of all the things we have to remember to do the next day we'll have things in our minds that we might be a bit worried about but actually in the middle of the night we can't really do anything about those things so writing them down in a notepad and uh, kind of agreeing with yourself that you'll look at that in the morning but for now you can't do anything about it but you've written it down so you're not going to forget about it and, you know, it's there in your notebook. That's a really good way of managing some of those worries that we sometimes wake up with in the middle of the night. Okay, um, Danielle, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Thing is there, so you're yeah, sitting there like this. Yeah, yeah, you can, so we're getting a lot of talk about having actual kind of nightmares, like almost night terrors that they can't. Yeah. That just they're so cool. And then blue. Listen, come on. You've all got stuff to say. Go on, then blue. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of stuff about people having nightmares that actually they can't move. So, and has that increased since COVID, or is that always? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it happened more during COVID. Yes. Yeah. Would you like me to send you some information out that you can share with the yeah, class listeners about yeah. nightmares and night terrors? Yeah. And you know, how you mentioned about being kind of paralysed when you're sleeping. Is that what you were mentioning yeah, there with yeah, the nightmare? Yeah. Yeah, that's common because you're in such a deep, deep sleep. I mean, imagine if you, if if we didn't have that, our body went kind of paralysed when we're in a deep sleep and dreaming. Then we'd be acting out our dreams, wouldn't we? So we'd be, you know, walking around or doing whatever we'd be doing in our uh, dreams. So our bodies are paralysed when we're in that deep, deep dream state. That's normal. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll send you some more information about. And nightmares and night terrors because could actually do another probably two hour session just on that so i'll send you out some information and then if you've got any individual questions maybe miss Linders can email those to me and i can respond to those on an individual basis if you'd like me to do that okay so Aaliyah, go on. why is it that like during the night before we want to make yeah do you hear that no go ahead okay. why is it that during the night feel more motivated to do things than you do during the day i would say i'm the opposite but they feel more motivated at oh, night that's unusual oh yeah. this, is, this is a good question who gave this question yeah who gave this question yeah. Adam? Adam? Oh, sorry i don't know why i don't always get your name right alia earlier alia alia really good yeah, question yeah so most of us fall into a normal sleep pattern, which would mean, this is going to bring me nicely onto the next uh, part of the presentation, actually, um, where we feel sleepy around the hours of about 11-ish and then waking up about 7, you know, or 12 till about 8 or 9, trying to fit in that 9 hours. Um, but some of us fall into two categories, either night owls or early birds, um, so some of us are a lot more productive and motivated late into the evening and some of us are just naturally um, much more motivated and productive first thing on the morning and that's just the way it is it's just part of your uh, biological makeup so you know it, it could be 
that you do, you do just naturally feel more motivated or productive late at night. And you know what's interesting to know? Most geniuses and very creative people have been night owls. So those of you in the class who feel a lot more productive on an evening, maybe you're also the genius of the classes as well. I don't know. Alicia, you had your hand up. <laughs> I've got another question, Miss. Okay. Go on. I think I'm doing this and falling through like a hole. Yeah. And I jump in my bed. Like I jump behind <laughs> 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 Do you hear that? No, I couldn't hear okay, the question. Okay, so let me quite an odd So, and this is getting a lot of reaction. I think a lot of people have this. When they're dreaming, they dream that they're falling and they will physically jump in their sleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so common. That's really normal. That's just going into your deeper stage of sleep and it's nothing to worry about. Generally, that'll happen, you know, your first sleep cycle because we go in and out of different sleep stages through the night. And it'll be when you've just just fallen off to sleep and you get in, you just you feel as if you're dropping, don't you? And then you yeah. kind of jump with a start. Really normal. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. OK. We've got, lots of hands, we've got lots of hands up here, Sarah. There's lots of. So Danielle and then Mansi and then Alan Mott. Yeah, You've got massive FOMO, haven't you? You've really, really got fear of missing out. Missing out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Feel for it, Mansi. Your dreams are only ten seconds. Is that? Is that? Do you, know, <laughs> do you know whether that's true, Sarah? No, that, that's not true. But that's I not think true, man. Times we can we can feel as if we've been we've gone lived through like a full day of kind of actions and adventures in our dreams sometimes, can't we? And then we'll look at our clocks when we wake up, and we've maybe only been asleep for half an hour, and in that we feel like we've done all kinds of things so it's as if time speeds up a bit sometimes isn't it when we're having dreams in our dream states yeah so I'm on to the next do you want me to move on to the next sorry we've got loads of hands okay. oh, I'm glad you've got lots of questions um, yeah We've got a lot of geniuses in this class because we've got a lot of oh, brilliant. Out. So you need to be expecting some really good um some really good assignments then, don't yeah, you? Definitely really good marks and all oh, the yeah. tests. <laughs> is it is it true that you dream every night but you don't always remember them? You, well, what you do do is you go into the dream stage in your sleep stages. <laughs> So generally, yeah, but often we can't remember our dreams when we wake up. Uh, have you noticed, like, you'll have a really vivid dream, you wake up and you think, oh, I can't believe that exciting dream that I've just had. I've got to tell, and like I might think, I've got to tell my good friend, Miss Leanders, about this. And um, then, like, ten minutes later, you've completely forgotten the dream. Yeah. That's quite common as well. You forget it very, very quickly. Yeah, I heard that if you don't tell somebody straight, if you tell somebody straight away... You'll you remember, remember it, but if you don't, yeah, tell but if you don't, yeah, that's you right. Yeah, if if you say it out loud as soon as you wake up, then you'll remember yeah, yeah. it. If you don't, okay. Do you want to move on now, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know, we had the question about um, feeling more productive on an evening, yeah. And I told you about the night owls and the early birds. There's also something a little bit strange about teenagers' sleep as well. Because the reason why we get sleepy is because of a hormone called melatonin that naturally is produced in our bodies. And melatonin is governed by light and dark phases. And that's why we feel more tired on a night time when it's dark outside and we feel more awake during the day when it's light. Now, with teenagers, they have, just as part of their development, a delayed production of melatonin. So what that means is it's much more difficult for teenagers to feel sleepy on a night time than it is for children or for adults. And that's why it's even more important that for teenagers that you have the right sleep advice to make sure you're doing all the right things during the day and on an evening to get a good night's sleep. So... What do you think are the effects of not getting enough sleep? So I'm particularly thinking about 
those um, students in your class, Miss Leanders, who had their hands up for having six hours or less sleep on a regular basis. But, you know, the rest of you that are getting a little bit more sleep than that, think about the last time you didn't sleep very well at all and how you felt during the day. And I'd just like to hear some of your ideas about what you think the effect of that has been. Well, Lena. So it physically, you can get like bags under your eyes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, Fatima. Yeah. So a delayed reaction. So if you've had like three hours sleep, initially real yeah. like energy and buzz, and then yeah. then crash. Yeah. Yes. Very much so, yeah. It's like you're running on empty and then you just yeah. crash out, definitely. Yeah, so energy levels and reaction times <laughs> reduced. Go on. Alicia, you forgot what you are going to say. Okay, Danielle. If you're really tired, you're really fidgety. Yeah. 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 It's kind of energy in your body, isn't it? Go on then, Alicia. Yeah. I'm just mm. getting mad at everybody. No one has to do me anything, but I just get mad at everybody. Yeah. 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 Moody. Sharp fuse. Was that yeah. really sharp fuse getting angry at anything? Yeah. yeah. Sarah's got a daughter your age. I'm sure you've experienced that with her as no, well. She sleeps but, really well because her mum's sleep specialist, <laughs> so you hope so. <laughs> <laughs> anything else about the effects of sleep deprivation? This is a good word as well, the sleep deprivation. Yeah. Anybody else, anything about the effects of sleep deprivation? I. And um, can it affect in terms of like your appetite or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to run over the effects of us not getting enough sleep to give you a bit of an idea how important it is to get enough sleep. And then we'll, we'll go on to how you get a good night's sleep. So the effects of not getting enough sleep are from a kind of mental health, emotional well-being point of view. Um, as you mentioned, we're much more likely to have a short fuse, much more likely to be tearful. Uh, lack of concentration, lack of short-term memory, so you're not able to remember things that you might have just learnt the day before. Um, we're much more likely to have irrational, unhelpful thinking. So small difficulties seem much bigger, we magnify them, and we've got kind of irrational responses to things as well. And in terms of mental health, the area that I work in, sleep deprivation is really uh, heavily linked to things like anxiety, uh, depression and even more kind of high-end uh, mental health difficulties around things like suicidal ideation, uh, self-harm and psychosis as well. There's really strong links. Um, physically, you were right, um, Miss Leanders, it affects our appetite. So it's really um, helpful if we're sleeping well to our weight management. If we're not sleeping well, we're quite likely uh, to put on weight or find it difficult to lose weight. And that's because when we haven't slept enough, our energy levels are very low. So we crave all the wrong kinds of food uh, during the day. So we'll be craving complex carbohydrates. We'll be cra cra craving things like um, chips, pasta, rice, sugary foods, uh, so sweets, crisps, things like that, biscuits, chocolate. And we'll probably be going for things like energy drinks or caffeinated products. And then we end up in a bit of a vicious cycle because all of those products will also prevent us from getting a good night's sleep on a night. You know, even a caffeinated product, so coffee, um, tea, Coca-Cola, after midday affects our ability to sleep well on a night. So okay, and hand up there. we started on monster drinks. Energy I've, drinks, I've, stay away from them. I've got a hand up, go on. Okay. How much sort of like caffeine should we not be having? So should I mean should you even be having any so at, at this age, so like sixteen, yeah. See in terms of caffeine, yeah. Should they be having none or right? So in terms of if, if you can manage to not be having things like Coca-Cola or, um, you know, cups of coffee, you know, coffee from a Starbucks or uh, cups of tea, if you can manage to not have any of those, that is the ideal because there's a good couple of reasons for that. As I said, after midday, drinking those products affects your sleep on a night, makes it more difficult to sleep. But actually with products like that, you get a boost of energy, but then you get a crash straight after 
So especially if we're feeling a little bit um, like our emotional well-being isn't as good as it could be, it's a good idea to avoid those products because it puts us on a high when we have them and then we come crashing down on a low. And actually caffeinated products also um, have the same effect on us physically as feelings of anxiety. So too many caffeinated products will increase our heart rate and make us breathe more quickly, which is a couple of the kind of signs and symptoms of anxiety. So if we're feeling quite worried or struggling with our emotional well-being and then we're drinking lots of caffeinated products, it's going to be impacting on our mental health and it's also going to be impacting on our sleep on a night. Okay, go on, Fatima. Um, <laughs> So if you, I don't know if you heard that, but if you have too many energy drinks, it yes. is long term, there's links to depression from people yeah. who have too many energy drinks. Yeah, and cardiac problems. And heart problems as well. Yeah, Go, yeah um, avoid them. They're filled with awful toxic substances. They you need to avoid those energy drinks. Um, some of the other um, physical uh, impact of not getting enough sleep, uh, that it really affects your immune system. So now more than any other time, we need our immune systems to be really robust, don't we? So getting a good night's sleep will really help with that. And then thinking long term into adulthood, sleep deprivation over a number of years is linked to uh, the development of diabetes. It's linked to cardiac problems, Alzheimer's and dementia, mental health issues and various cancers. So there's a very, very good reason to be aiming for getting a good night's sleep on a night. Okay, so shall we move on to how you can do that? Hands. Go on, Molly. Okay. Um, I just wanted to bring you a very simple question. Do you normally have any Well, oh, that sounds like drain your lymph nodes before you go to sleep. That sounds... And how, how do you plan on draining your lymph nodes? <laughs> like oh, it's, it's like pressure points. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like your pressure points around, around. I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. Um, the the student who suggested that, could you put something together and email that to me, and you I'll have a look at that. Video about it, didn't you? Okay, so I'll find out what the video yeah, was. Yeah, find out. I'd really like to hear more about that. Yeah. That yeah. sounds really good. Okay, one more hand up on them. This is a really good question. Go ahead. Napping during the day. Oh no! Yes, don't do not. it. Don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's hear what she says about napping during the day. What, what's <laughs> so a lot, a lot of teenagers nap during the day when they get home from school, and actually you can understand that because you know how I mentioned to you that for teenagers that production of that sleepy hormone called melatonin is delayed anyway. So actually it's really difficult for teenagers to get to sleep at the right time in order to get up at the right time to get to school. So uh, you can understand why a lot of teenagers are quite sleep deprived and why they're absolutely shattered when they get home from school and want to nap. But if we have a nap on an afternoon, then it, it prevents us from having, it's called sleep pressure, it prevents us from being sleepy later on in the day. So what would be a better thing to do if you're feeling sleepy on an afternoon when you finish school is to just go outside and have a bit of an outdoor exercise. That'll energise you, it'll wake you up again. But not only that, it improves mood being outside in nature. It releases something called endorphins. So it'll improve your mood. It also improves your concentration and it'll make you feel more awake. So if you're feeling like having, having a nap, go for a walk instead after school. Okay. Yep. Go on then, Alamo. I feel like I can not do that. Like, I can't, like, when I'm tired, all I want to do is sleep. Some of it is you have to really force yourself, don't yeah. you? It's, yeah. It's, you have to really force yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah i know sarah's going to talk about the use of i'm sure you're going to talk about that yes yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute go on then alicia I think, like, when I sleep, yeah it doesn't affect you yeah i suppose everybody has their own kind of sleep pattern yeah and do you know do you know what miss linders some um, some people can do everything wrong in terms of 
optimizing their sleep potential on a night and still are brilliant sleepers. So, but some people, majority of people struggle with the sleep and the majority of teenagers struggle with the sleep. So what we need to do is make sure that they are doing everything right during the day to mean that they get a good night's sleep at night. Okay, okay. Do you wanna, should we move on to what helps teenagers to sleep well? Yeah. Can I just check, Miss Linders, have I just got 10 minutes? You've got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes, okay, because I just want to make sure that um, everybody has some ideas about how they get a good night's sleep on a night before we finish today. But I'll send you a load of information out as well to share with your class too, Miss Linders. So, there's kind of four areas here that we need to think about that help us to get a good night's sleep um, on a night. So right from the minute we wake up on a morning, it affects our daytime, our nighttime sleep, sorry. So these might be things you want to take some notes on as well. So you've got some ideas about what might improve your sleep as I'm going through them. So what we need to do is we need to set our body clock to be awake at the right time and feeling sleepy at the right time. So it's really important to get up at a similar time every day even on a weekend or even during the holidays. And the reason for that is it strengthens your circadian rhythm. It strengthens your body clock. So you might have noticed, especially over the last year with the pandemic, when people have been out of routines and maybe sleeping in a little bit later, it's then quite difficult to get back into a routine of getting up earlier and going to bed a bit earlier. We need to try and keep those um, wake times and going to bed and sleep times pretty similar all the time so we've strengthened our body clocks the second thing to think about as soon as you wake up in the morning is to try and get some outdoor exercise even if it's just sitting outside going for a walk around the block for five minutes if you get outside um then it wakes our body up and it's also really good as i mentioned earlier for boosting your mood and also to help with your concentration you know just 20 minutes exercise first thing in the morning improves your concentration for up to four hours after you've part partaked in that exercise so another good thing to try and do the other thing to mention about um, exercise is any kind of exercise during the day is fabulous especially in the morning especially outside but avoid exercise close to your bedtime because it will wake you up. So we normally suggest that two hours before you want to be going to bed, you avoid exercise. So the other thing to think about is your bedroom environment. And it's really important that your bedroom is as dark as possible. So if you can have blackout blinds or blackout curtains, that really helps. It really helps if it's very dark in your room to produce that hormone called melatonin that makes us sleepy. Lots of people struggle with a room that's really dark. They don't like it to be very, very dark in the bedroom. So having a very dim light is okay, or even one of those plug-in lights that have a really, really dim light as well. But we don't want lights being left on through the night or any kind of bright lights at all. And your bedroom needs to be as calm in a place as possible. Um, and that means it being quite organised. So for those of you who've got quite messy bedrooms or maybe you've got school books around or homework around, things like that, try and straighten that up a bit because the calmer your bedroom is, the better night's sleep you'll have. And like I mentioned earlier, it does need to be quite cool in your bedroom as well. So the optimum uh, temperature for sleeping well is around 17 degrees. Now, we've already mentioned about diet. I mentioned to you about avoiding those caffeinated products and sugary products, especially uh, for your caffeinated products after midday, for your sugary products after kind of evening time. Um, but there's also uh, some foods and drinks that help us to feel sleepy. So has anybody got any ideas what those foods and drinks might be? Go on. Milk. Milk. Yeah, milk's one of them. So any calcium-based products, so that's milk, cheese, yogurts, all really good to help us to feel sleepy on a night. So incorporate those into your supper. Anything else? Anything else? Go on. I thought it's all about the cheese. Milk that is going to give you nightmares. And about cheese? No, about milk will give you nightmares. Oh, or cheese, I've heard that cheese will give you nightmares. It's cheese that's the kind of the, it's a kind yes. of an old-fashioned saying that cheese will give you nightmares. It's a load of rubbish. 
But I definitely don't suggest you eating like a big block of cheese. I think it <laughs> disrupt your digestion and make you wake in wake up during the night. But something like cheese on toast would be fine. Absolutely fine. I would say I think one of the other foods is bananas. Yeah. Yes. So there's various fruits uh, and bananas is is one of them. Um, and <laughs> Any, so Blue, you had your hands up. Go on. Go on. I had this dream one time there, like, soup was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> had you eaten cheese? No, no, no. I go to my mum's kid, and I think I'm sort of mad, and we're like, and why is it all? It's like, crying, crying. I don't, I mean, she's, she's, my friend is amazing, but she can't. <laughs> She can't analyse your dreams like that. <laughs> oh, I can do a bit of dream analysis. So, okay, so we've got a student here who said she had a really, really scary dream, and in the dream, she a man tried to kidnap her, and then she, she he did kidnap her, and then she thought she saw the man in reality. And so she thought she saw the man in real life. Yeah. I mean, that just sounds generally like, you know, you have to think about when you're looking at dreams, how did you feel in the dream? And that sounds as if you were feeling quite anxious or quite scared as the feeling. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if those are kind of feelings that are coming up from dreams, then it's a good idea to have a think about your day to day life and think, is there anything that's coming up or anything that's kind of worrying me at the moment? Because that might be coming into our subconscious as a dream like that. It might be nothing to do with somebody following you, but it might just be, you know, I'm feeling a bit anxious about this that's going on at the moment and that's culminating in my subconscious giving me these anxious feelings about you know things like being chased or not being able to get away from someone or you know something like that so it's mainly linked to the feeling so then what you need to do is go back and think right what is it at the moment that's causing me some worries or some anxiety during my day-to-day -day life and what can I do to help with that well then <laughs> Um, what, 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 yeah. Recurring dreams. Oh yeah, I used to have a recurring dream about my teeth falling out. And yeah, I've had I have that. recurring dreams about losing. Yeah, my yeah. I think what might what might be a good idea, Miss Linda, because there seems to be quite a few questions about dreams, and also at the start we were talking a little bit about nightmares. Why don't you send me an email through with the kind of questions and the things that your students are saying and then I'll answer them and you can share that in class okay. so you get a bit more of an individual response that might be helpful yeah, I'll do that. Um, so I'll move on now to oh in terms of the sleepy foods the reasons why uh, they help us to sleep is because they those products have something in them called tryptophan and that eventually converts into melatonin, which is our sleepy hormone. And what I'll do, Miss Linders, is I will send out a list of all the sleepy foods. And maybe your students can have a look at that and think of some suppers that they could have and try out that would enhance their potential for <laughs> sleep. So the last, um, the last kind of um, suggestion that I'm going to make about how you'll get a good night's sleep is about the hour before you want to be falling asleep. So the hour before you want to be getting into bed, ready to sleep and what you need to be doing in the hour. And this is where we come on to good old devices because this is a big one. So an hour before you want to be going to sleep, you really need to be turning all your devices off. That means your mobile phones, your iPads, you know, if you're gamers, if you go on YouTube, if you go on social media, um, those screens need to be off and the reason for that is the blue light activity from your screens impact on your production of the hormone melatonin so it stops uh, the melatonin being produced and makes you more awake it kind of fools your brain and your body into thinking it's time to be awake because of the bright light and remember I said to you melatonin and us feeling sleepy it's all about it being dark it's all based on light and dark phases so it's really important to turn your devices off now before you want to go to sleep if there's one thing that I can suggest that you do to improve your sleep that is it limiting your device usage it's really really important through the day use your devices as much as you like on a night they need to be going on an hour before you want to go to sleep it's so important it makes the biggest difference okay In right. that hour, i've got to put another hand up come on yeah on, on, on my phone, like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some phones, I know mine does, has like a night light, dim yeah. light. Yeah. Night shift, yeah. So that so that's that that's a slight improvement, but you are still going to get the electromagnetic radiation from your blue light activity, from the light from your screens, which will keep you awake. You'll still get some of that. So it's still going to keep you awake. The best thing to do is to put those devices down, turn them off and have them out of reach so you're not tempted to keep looking at them, especially if you wake up during the night. Because I'm sure for those of you who've woken up during the night, if you've gone for your phones to have a look on Instagram or TikTok, Snapchat, whatever, suddenly you're wide awake. The reason you're wide awake is because of the uh, blue light activity, but it's also because of the content of what you're looking at. So the content tends to be, especially if you're kind of looking at social media, it's quite exciting or quite often it can be quite anxiety provoking as well. It'll get you worried, you know, why didn't you get so many likes on this photograph? What did they mean by this particular comment they wrote about what you'd said when you made a comment on this? You know, it gets our brains really overthinking just before we want to go to sleep. And that's not helpful. That increases our levels of anxiety. And it means that we don't get a good night's sleep. So devices off is really important. So instead of being on your devices in the hour before bed, as I mentioned earlier, doing anything where you're concentrating with your eyes and doing something quite intricate with your hands, like sketching, writing a diary, doing a puzzle, doing a bit of jewellery making, anything like that, maybe playing an instrument, is really, really helpful to help in, to make us feel calm. The other thing to do is to, if possible, have a warm bath or a warm shower just before you get into bed. The reason that that's helpful is because it heats up our outer body temperature, which means our core body temperature goes down and that kind of replicates what our body temperature is like in deep sleep. So it makes us feel really kind of heavy and our muscles feel really heavy as we get into bed and it makes us a lot more ready to fall off to sleep then. Okay, so, Sarah, we've got like two minutes and I've got some hands yeah. up. So, Alicia? Okay, so I can't sleep like I don't have a device and I have to have something on because and I've been my mum 100% of that. Because when I was a child, she's sleeping the TV on. And then from then, I've never been able to sleep without like the TV on, or, like my phone watching something. I just can't sleep and it's just dark. Okay, so I don't know how much of that you heard, but we yeah. have quite a lot of nodding going on here as well to students who've kind of grown up with falling asleep yeah. to TV on, and yeah. that has now meant that they can't sleep in like absolute silence. Yeah, yeah. So not ideal that you've fallen asleep with the TV on. What we what we often do if we fall asleep relying on something is we develop a sleep association with that. And then during the night, when we come into our lighter sleep, we have something called a partial awakening and we come fully awake. And if we've relied on something to fall asleep to as we fall asleep, then we're very likely when we have that partial awakening during our sleep stages through the night to wake up and then really struggle to fall back off to sleep again. So we have broken sleep throughout the night. The ideal is that we're not relying on something to fall asleep with. It does take a bit of practice because if you've got into a habit of being used to there being some background noise or something going on, that can be quite difficult to change, can't it? But what we can do is do that in small steps, change it in small steps. So you might think, right, OK, I'll have I'll have my TV on. I'll leave that on as I would do normally so I can hear it. But I'm going to turn it away so I'd, I've not got the bright light activity as I fall asleep. I'm not looking at the screen. Try that for a bit. And then as you get used to that and having that bit of noise in the background, but not the screen, then have a go at turning the screen off as well and maybe putting some music on instead, having a podcast on or something. And then slowly wean yourself off that as well, because the best night's sleep you'll get is if you're not relying on something just as you fall asleep. If you're doing all the right things during the day to get a good night's sleep, when you get into bed, after you've had a warm bath or a warm shower, you've maybe had some of those sleepy foods for your supper done a bit of writing in a journal or a bit of sketching or something like that, you'll just naturally fall off to sleep without depending on something to do that too. Right, Sarah, we're about to, a bell's about to go here, so I want to have a chance to say thank you from all of us. Okay. So, so you'll put your full screen on so we can see you. Yes, Stop sharing. Thank you so much. That was really interesting.
Oh, let me just get yeah, my, stop sharing. I'll give you a, a load of information yeah. that we can share because I know we shared a lot of information today, didn't we? Um, but what I would, if you've got time, what I would like the um, students in the class to do, and you might not do it now, you might not do that straight away, but what would be really helpful for you to do is to, all of you from what you've learned today, just make kind of one pledge to change one thing about what you're doing during the day or on a night that would help with your sleep on a night time. Okay. Okay, so can we say thank you? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Your, um, dream. I'll dream for, anal for analysis. <laughs>